Hey everyone, and thanks for joining us for another episode of Mike's Mini Motors. So today I'm working on Big Booty Trudy again for the Yamaha C3 build series. And if you've been following along, you've seen we've got the LED tail light done, the LED headlight, our intake, and the stretch installed. Um, also did the exhaust, but it wasn't quite part of the build series. But anyways, uh, so today we're going to be doing our CVT transmission upgrades. So we're going to do a new variator, sliders, a Rubino clutch. So let me get you guys a closer look at all the parts we're going to be installing today, and then we'll jump, jump right into it. And here you have it. This is the part spread that we're going to be installing today. So we've got the a new Melosi belt uh, and the Melosi variator kit, which is the variator itself, the contra spring for your clutch, your adapter pieces, and six gram rollers. But I'm not going to use the rollers as I got the six gram sliders from Dr. Pulley. And the sliders and the variator kit and the belt all came with my big boy kit that I ordered from Rolling Wrench with the big bore kit and all of those things. And I'll put a link in the description for that. Here we have uh, titanium dress-up hardware from XF50 Moto. Replaces a bunch of nuts and bolts and stuff with titanium, just nice looking pieces. Uh, this isn't really related to the CVT, but since I'm gonna be in here working, I'm gonna throw in this NGK Iridium plug. And then last but not least, we have our Ravino clutch. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull a couple panels off of this spike just to make it a little easier to work on, and then I'll be back in a moment. All right, so I went ahead and pulled the side panel off here. It wasn't really in the way, but just that way, really not in the way. Um, then I went ahead and got it up on the center stand. Otherwise, the center stand was <laughs> right here. So now I'm going to go ahead and get the CVT cover pulled off, which is two 10 mils to get the decorative piece off. And then six, I think it's six, eight mils. And then we'll have that popped off. All right, so here is our open CVT right now. Doesn't look too bad in here, but like this bike only has, I think today I hit 1300 miles on it, so it's not too bad. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with uh, pulling the variator face off. So we can get this belt and everything off. And I'll just, while I'm doing this guy, I'll pull the clutch belt off too. All right, there's the transmission gutted. Got the old clutch here. And you can see the clutch pads are a bit glazed over. The old belt, actually not too bad a condition. Not frayed or nothing. And then the variator. Like I said, this bike only had 1300 miles on it. So it's not like this was really worn out. But one thing I was going to point out too is when I slid the variator off, normally, let me slide it back on, there's this little tiny washer from the factory that goes right here. And then you put the face on. And what that does is it makes it so that the variator can't open up all the way and get the belt to the furthest part out here. It's a limiting spacer. And a lot of people pull those out, which I would have done that if I wasn't doing this swap, at least to get me a little bit better performance there. And the Melosi variator does also come with this limiting spacer if you want to use it, but I don't want to limit myself, so I won't be using it. But I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the camera for a second. I'm gonna, there's just some rubber dust from the belt in here. I'm gonna clean all that out and then we'll just jump into our next part. All right, now that we got most of the dust cleaned up out of here and all the stock stuff pulled out, we're ready to get our variator, our Melosi variator set up. So I gotta put the sliders in here. And I was gonna show you, in the bottom of the case for the sliders is this piece of paper. Come on, focus. So you can see there the orientation that these sliders need to go into your variator. So make sure to follow that, otherwise you're not gonna have a good time. Okay, so now we got our sliders and everything in there. We take, where do you go now? <laughs> oh, here it is. This little two, mi two millimeter spacer, just a washer from Melosi, goes on the crankshaft first. And then your variator. 
just like so. And then we're not going to finish the rest of this here until we get the clutch together. So we need to get the old clutch off the pulley and the Ravino put on here. So let's move the camera and get that done. All right, so here's the factory clutch and pulley and we need to get it off of there. And I picked up this socket from Rolling Wrench. It's for these clutch, clutch nuts. Uh, and I'll put a link in the description for you. So what I do is I put my feet on it like this here just because there is it's spring loaded and then zip it off. Make sure. Okay. And carefully leave the print tension. And there's multiple different tools and ways to do this. This is just the, the way that I do it. All right, so here's the stock clutch pulley and contra spring. So once you get the clutch off, the contra spring just pops off like that. We can take our Melosi, put it back on like that. And then it's the exact opposite of the uninstall. Just getting this put on here. Should be able to push down my hand. There, I got it started. And then one trick so you don't scratch up the face of your Ravino. Put the towel and put it down first. And just like that, our Ravino clutch is installed. And now we can start putting this thing back together. Well, we're ready for reassembly now. So first I can take the clutch assembly, get this pulled in a little bit. We put our clutch bell on. And now I got the titanium nut. And this one here is a 14 mil. I think both the stock ones I took off are 17s, but this dress up hardware, this one's a 14 and this one's a 15. Okay, one important thing to keep in mind when you're reassembling your variator is this goes on here and there's splines that even stick out past the drive face for your kicker Kickstarter cup. And it slides on there too, but then even once you get that on there, these uh, splines are still a little bit proud and the washer that goes on here, I don't know if you'll be able to tell or not, but it's actually concave. Yeah, not to take my word on it, but you can see this side here with the rubbings, this is the outside because it's cupped this way. Let's see, like, <laughs> like so. So that the, the proud splines are here and then this is then tightens down on the kicker cup and not onto the crankshaft because if you did that, then these would be loose and you don't want that. All right, so she's back together. Only thing I have left to do is to slap the cover back on and test her out. Well, as you guys can see, the CVT upgrade parts were pretty easy to install. Uh, nothing too crazy. No real specialty tools minus the uh, 38 or 39, I forget, millimeter uh, socket for the clutch to actually swap it out. But like I said, that part, I'll put a link in the description for you. Um, but now what we're going to do is I picked up this guy here, which is called a Draggy. Um, and it links to satellites and everything like that. So I can, like I, did test this already with the stock CVT for quarter mile time, stuff like that, just so I can give you guys real world results of before and after of these upgrades. So uh, I'll go ahead and roll the video of the stock CVT and show you guys how long a quarter mile was on that. Uh, and then we'll do it again right now with uh, this guy and see what it is with the upgraded CVT.
right, so I'm back from doing my test runs on this here with the Draggy recordings. Um, and what I ended up doing is I did a few runs uh, with the stock CVT and then also a few runs with this upgraded CVT now. And then just took the best numbers. And the, the parameters I measured was quarter mile time and time from zero to 30 miles per hour. So we'll start with quarter mile. Uh, before with the stock CVT, my best run was 30.56 seconds per quarter mile. And my best run with the upgraded CVT was 29.55. So I ended up getting 1.01, so just over a second better on the on the quarter mile. So that's a good or that's an improvement. I don't know how good that is, but uh, on the zero to 30 miles per hour, though, we've seen a much better improvement. So with the stock CVT, we were at 13.42 seconds, and the upgraded CVT we hit 10.79. So that was an improvement of 2.6 set, excuse me, 2.63 seconds. So over two and a half seconds faster. And I definitely felt the acceleration difference with the CVT upgrade. Um, top end seemed to be about the same at first, uh, maybe a mile or two lower actually. Uh, but then as I drove around a bit more, I was hitting 45 on the flats where before doing this upgrade, about 43 was the max I'd ever hit. So even a top end improvement, which is nice. Um, so that's gonna go ahead and wrap up this episode, but we still got more more coming for the build series on this this bike um next up should be the big bore kit so going from a 50 to a 76 so quite an improvement and so the power gauge should be nice and then again i'll do the same thing with the draggy just to show you guys real world improvements and yeah so if you want to see the rest of the build series and even the other stuff i've got coming up uh go ahead and hit that subscribe button uh if you want to say anything leave me a comment and if you like what i'm doing give me a like and with that, I'll see you guys in the next episode. Thanks.